Just doing some housekeeping here, getting the recording going. Thank you, Matt. And when you have time, I, I need to touch base with you on the office in OK Falls, further to meeting with Chris Garish and Carmen on, on Thursday and Friday. So just when you had a chance, wanted to update you and get your thoughts on that one. Okay, I think we've got you. Are you on? I'm here. Okay. okay I'm going to wait another minute or two. I had understood Kurt um, was going to be with us. Wow. Okay, well. Ah, good. Okay. Okay, I believe we have everybody. It's going to be on the call today, so I'll call the meeting to order. Um, just the usual reminders, um, the meeting's being recorded. Um, purpose of today's call uh, that was set out, and, and there may be other purposes brought in, but I think the primary purpose was to facilitate the getting out of the release of the survey with the background document. And to do that, we needed to uh, finalize and give our agreement to the map or the map in principle and the survey and the background document. So those were, um, the purposes that I put out in advance, are we comfortable with that as a purpose? Okay, not seeing anything else. No reservations, okay. Um, can we approve an agenda then as being uh, to, a, to provide confirmation in purpose and accepting that there may still be tweaks to the map, the survey, and the background document? I'll move it. Thank you, Phyllis. Can I have a seconder, please? Seconded by Kurt. Okay, all those in, any further discussion? Seeing, hearing none. All those in favor, raise your hand, say aye. 
Okay. Bye. Thank you. All right. Uh, I should also confirm that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of eight, and we have quorum. Okay. Um, so, uh, map. You received a, a copy of the map. Um, and I think the intent here was to draw the area that encompassed all residential properties while being less than area D and minimizing you know, the, the footprint outside of the residential properties. So open for discussion. This, this map would go uh, be subbed in in place of the map labeled option E on the survey. Matt, I'm having a hard time finding that map. Do you have a second just to quickly email it to me again? Yeah. Go ahead, Phyllis. Uh, so I just have a question um, about the roads. I understand that, uh, <laughs> is that okay, Matt? <laughs> um, the, the roads that are in the municipality are the, are the, re, the uh, maintenance cost is the responsibility of the municipality. However, uh, I understand that if it's a secondary access road uh, that's necessary, like say for instance, um, East Side Road, that, that uh, you know, if, if there was a fire, say for instance, and people had to evacuate, then that becomes something that it would be a shared cost between the province and the municipality. Is that correct? I just want the confirmation of that. I mean, and that would be a negotiated thing. Am I right? Um, or I don't believe you're correct on that. Um, major highways, Highway 97, is a provincial government responsibility and we won't, nothing we could do would, would change that. Okay. I think I as well, there are forest service roads and those are the responsibility, Kurt may know this better than me, whether it's the responsibility of forest service or the, the tree forest company I don't know, but I don't believe we are responsible for those either. But in between roads like East Side Road, that we would be responsible for. The road going up Carmi, that we would be responsible for. Okay. I did have a conversation uh, with Kelvin Hall about that. And he said that there, you know, with his experience in, in various municipalities, that it is possible to have a shared cost so that, that the whole cost wouldn't be on the, on the municipality. I wonder if Director Obrick knows anything about that. Uh, you can hear Go me, ahead, Ron. Just checking my mute button. Um, I, I don't know for certain, but I can confirm from communities that got, have gone through this process before, there is a long uh, period of transition. And during transition, uh, there are things that can be done, uh, including grant applications and assurances for getting the roads in good shape. Uh, indeed, West Kelowna's experience is they had to threaten litigation to the province and they were able to get those roads uh, put into uh, better shape. Uh, during transition, reserves are uh, often established. So on the transition period, the monies that go to roads, it, it, it's, it's, it gets quite uh, technical. But, but high level, it's happened before many times. There's a better way to do it, a less good way to do it. The key is to pay attention. Uh, Mr. Zafino, I don't know if he's on the line, but he might have some better ability to answer this. But your question on those secondary roads, is there a chance for a copay? Uh, I don't know, but here's what I do know. 
during transition, yes, there are those kind of discussions. And after the fact, there are grants that are available. Uh, just to use a simple example, uh, Sycamus, which incorporated 1989. And I met the mayor on Thursday, April 28 at Silga. And I asked him if he would like to undo their incorporation, be like us. He said, not a chance. I asked him why. And he gave reasons. Most of those reasons are known to this committee. But he said, the last six years alone, they received $40 million. That's a community of 2,400, 40 million in grants that they would not have qualified for. And many of those grants would pertain to infrastructure like roads. So it's a, it's a, it's a curious question because the, the short answer is very complex. The long answer, more complex, but those grant monies come from federal and provincial governments. Sometimes they're one third, one third, one third. Uh, Minister Robinson, February 7, 2020 in Richmond, they uh, took away the one third provincial uh, or local uh, requirement and the province picks that up. In other words, it would have cost us zero on one of those grants. These details are amazing, they matter, but in terms of the realities, the realities are, it's way less scary than some people would lead you to believe. And when you know the history of other communities and what they've done, uh, they have had not just good successes, but really great successes when they pay attention to those details. So there is funding. Grants, obviously, are provincial and federal money that come into those projects. So there is funding, well, likely two-thirds. Uh Go ahead, question. Kurt. Go ahead, Kurt. But I have I have further information to Phyllis's question. So if you're going on to a new question, could I provide further info before you do that? Please. Okay. So, um, like Ron, I've had uh, conversations with with Jim, and just my understanding that I got from that is that there is a transition date for roads, and the as part of our package, which would be developed and negotiated with prior to um, our referendum, okay? So we would know what our package is prior to the referendum. That package would include an estimate of road ma maintenance repair costs for the subsequent five years, which is, the, I think, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, Ron, but I think that's the transition period Ron is talking about. Now, they do that by going to their MOTI people and saying, what do you think it's going to cost to maintain and upgrade these roads for the next five years? They get a number and they give that to us as part of our package. We can, we can actually push back on that number and say, not enough. We need more. Okay. And uh, I, I think that's, that's been done. So that's all I have to say. Go ahead, Ron, and then we'll go on to Kurt. Yeah, and, and another uh, comment arising from uh, Matt's uh, information uh, on, um, uh, it was uh, Wednesday, April uh, 6, 2022 in Richmond, I was talking to Paul Demenuk on uh, their experience in Blind Bay and uh, others at the table. And, and fascinatingly, uh, the, the, uh, transition, the transition formula for funding has not been amended in decades. And one of his uh, very proper suggestions, I would say, is be very careful because uh, you know, things are more expensive now than they were 20 and 30 years ago. And it's time for an update. And I, I made note of what he told me. And whatever the formula is, we will get that money, but it may be that we could get more money if we ask, you know, ask the wrong question, get the wrong answer, ask the right question, get a, you know, ask a different question, get a different answer. We have questions that deserve answers here, but that one is massive. And, and so there is negotiations possible. Uh, there have been areas that have been neglected by Modi and that, that opens a whole new opportunity for discussion. You wanna do that during transition. When we look at our area specifically, just to give you one quick example, McLean Creek Road, the road is in great shape. And if you look at what's been spent there recently, it's a, it's a, very, uh, it's a very interesting asset, but it's not one that's in need of a lot of attention. It's actually, uh, there, there's some room there. Uh, 
where we have some of our worst roads, paradoxically, is Skaha States. And I could take you there and show them to you. I've taken Modi staff there and shown it to them. And they just haven't done anything in that area for over uh, 40 years. Uh, and you know, since that subdivision was done, uh, that's an example of something that needs attention. It has to be not forgotten. And it's probably a lot of money when you pay it the proper attention. And they should pay. It is wrong for them to download their mismanagement and neglect onto us. And I think that's the thrust of your question, Phyllis. And there is a good answer to your good question. It's just a little bit of work. Right. Um, other comments relative to the map? Kurt. Um, we hired a consultant. Where are they? They've been missing for the last few meetings. And these are questions that they should be addressing. I am told by the consultant. A second. Matt, I have it here. Oh, go ahead then. Um, uh, whoever that is. It's Kay. Sorry. Okay, Kay. Yeah. Um, it's uh, Alan said, sorry, but Sherry and I won't be on the call. We understood you and the committee members were confirming the committee's option E. And he also says option E has crown land. If the committee wants all residential, the boundary will by necessity include crown land. So the short answer is from the conversation they had with you and I, Matt, they were of the understanding that it was just us, the committee. So, and we never, I don't recall us actually saying they should be here either. So that's our bad. Kurt, anything more to that? I'm just on the on the map now. Back. Yeah. Uh, I've got goes, you next, Ron. I hope that goes in the minutes. By the way, my last comment. Um, uh, just for the map. So we have one road that's kind of unusual, and that's the 201, which originates in OK Falls and terminates at Highway 33. That is, um, to my understanding, a secondary highway, but it's also a forest service road. And there's also access to it from Beaverdale Road. So in the case that Highway 97 is closed, which it has been in the past due to construction, uh, landslides, a number of different things, then they open up the 201 to gain uh, South Okanagan access to Central Okanagan access. Um, so it's, it's been used as a secondary highway a number of times. So that means that the road, Carmi Road from the bottom of the hill till it meets Beaverdale Road and then Beaverdale Road till it meets the 201 becomes a secondary highway. So that's an interesting note. It's a kind of an unusual road that may not be um, consistent with other municipalities having such a road where it has so many fingers in the pot. Um, uh, Ministry of Forests, uh, highways, and then um, residential roads would be uh, worth asking the question. I'm, I'm thinking that uh, our consultants would have very accurate answers on this, but I'm not hearing them. Okay. So I personally don't know if 201 is um, our responsibility or theirs. And I think that's the, the key issue is that Moti's responsibility and does it remain Moti's responsibility or does it go with the municipality, whether it's secondary or tertiary or I think minor. that all, kind of aside from the fact that we want uh, public input, whether they're interested in incorporation um, from their community, whether the roads um, need um, addressing at a later date is probably a question for a later date. But for the all intents and purposes of the survey, I think we need public input from all people in area D whether the road remains or is a responsibility of ours or not, kind of inconsequential at this point. Yeah, right. So good enough. Thanks then, Kurt. That clarifies things. Ron. 
Yeah, and thank you. Uh, I, I agree. I think Phyllis's uh, question and, and Kurt's comment go together. Uh, for example, that secondary road question uh, on in a municipality, is there a co-sharing with the province? Yes or no? I've heard uh, conflicting information. I'd like a clear answer. And I, you know, the consultants, I, I hope, could assist with providing that answer. Uh, likewise, I've heard questions about can Crown Land be within a municipal district? Yes or no? And I don't know of a reason it can't be, but I'd, I'd like a, a clear answer on that one. I know the last few meetings that's been asked and not yet answered. Uh, I hope the consultants review these uh, recordings and these questions, you know, these are answers that could be provided. Uh, I know I heard others at the past two meetings raise questions uh, in that context. I would like to know pros and cons of having Crown land within a municipal district. And my final point is uh, to consider uh, arising on answers to questions, obviously, uh, you know, maybe you exclude the Crown lands uh, as your boundary configuration in that option. E. I think that has likely uh, benefit uh, in, in that the Crown lands really are different from uh, communities like Upper Carmi or McLean Creek Road or, or Skaha Estates. Uh, I, I think on the boundary, uh, I think you've got um, real issues here. And uh, I, I personally, uh, I'm, I'm having trouble with, uh, you know, the people on the West, the, the, the Trestle Bridge, I really think needs to be in part of OK Falls. I would not exclude the Trestle Heritage Bridge ever. And I think those uh, five residences on the uh, east side of uh, 97 and the other four residences on the west side of 97, they all have their proper nexus to OK Falls. I, I do not see that uh, on that specific part of the boundary. Uh, I, I don't even know why that would ever be excluded from OK Falls proper. Personally, that's uh, I, I, I have a real problem with that one. I said so when the uh, recommendation came in April uh, 13, my, my position hasn't changed. I haven't heard anything uh, that, that, that sways me the other way. Indeed, what I hear from community and, and uh, others, uh, you know, and, and I've talked to others uh, who've been through this before, like Mayor former Mayor Finlater, I, I do not see a good reason for that uh, exclusion personally. And I think it would be wrong of me not to speak to this in the committee. I don't get to vote, but I certainly get a chance to speak and I should, I should have that opportunity to be heard. And thank you to the chair for permitting me to speak. Much appreciated. Okay. So um, I think Kurt, and don't go away because you, um, helped us sort of coalesce on, on I think, the decision there. Um, the primary purpose of option E was to include all residential properties. If we include all residential properties, this would appear to be the map. Um, that will, of necessity, as the consultant has said, include Crown Land. It will include some roads which may or may not be our responsibility, that will be determined in more detail as, as we go further. You know? Ron. Yeah, thank you. Comment arising. Uh, I did ask for maps early on in the committee process to be distributed for exactly this reason. I had no idea until this last week, maybe, that we had these uh, residences on Crown land. Absolute surprise to me. And I think that's a detail worth uh, considering at this late hour. Uh, it certainly speaks to uh, what uh, this committee's advice is going to be. Uh, I think it's an important detail and uh, we don't have good answers to, to those questions, uh, at least not from staff or consultants, obviously. And uh, it, it does cause me a lot of concern, but I, I'd, I'd like to hear from others in the committee what they think about that. Okay, okay. Mute, unmute. Unmute, I am unmuted. Um, I think that we have done our utmost at the last meeting to um, give direction as to the boundary in the spirit of inclusiveness for option E, we voted to include all residential properties in um, 
in uh, area D. Um, that was done. Um, I would suggest that uh, we do make a motion and I'm prepared to move um, that the committee accept the map for option E in principle um, for the survey. We knowing that there may be um, some, once the uh, map specialist uh, does his tweaking that there might be some slight, uh, this is for the survey. Um, the outcome of the survey uh, and the people who have an opportunity to speak will certainly provide us with direction, including the people who live within who live on the residences within the crown land because that was raised at the last meeting that there were residences in the crown land which is why we had the last meeting um, to draw that to the attention of the committee and see um, what if anything the committee wanted to do and the committee made a motion that was virtually identical to the motion the meeting before okay so i'm going to shorten that motion just that we're no, we're, <laughs> we're accepting the map as drawn and and that's the motion and accepting then we the understand that there are tweaks perhaps coming down the road is um, that accepting the map in principle yeah okay good i like that uh is there is well i like it is there a second i have david forced so made by k seconded by david forced is there any further discussion on the map once twice Three times. I'll call the question. All those in favor of the map in principle? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, anyone opposed? Seeing and hearing none, that one is carried. Okay. Good move. One down. Survey. Um, Matt? Go ahead, Kurt. Sorry to interrupt. I'm just uh, kind of uh, follow up on that map question. I'm just interesting. I never realized that those those um, properties on Crown land existed either. And I'd like a little history on them. Are they converted tree farm licenses? Are they um, grandfathered properties from years ago? Are there is there any buildings on them? I just I, I, I'd like some history on those. I like Ron said, I had no idea they even existed. Okay. Um... If we want, I guess we can record an action item. My expectation is that that would go to RDOS, not to consultants. And yeah. I do understand that um, these properties may be residential properties, does not necessarily mean they have a residence on them. Yeah. Okay. I've quoted all over that country and I know of uh, half a dozen cabins at Allendale Lake and one on the 201, but I haven't seen a structure aside from that. Okay, all right. Shall we move to the sir, Ron? Yeah, just of interest, um, up to 201, we have squatters and uh, issues that relate to crime and community of a lot of concern. The police have taken action. So, uh, and on Upper Karma, I've heard the same thing. So I don't know if they're technically residents, but they're certainly living on those crown lands. And uh, going forward, there may be a, a time and place where that may be uh, worthy of consideration when looking at final boundary recommendation. And, and that's a detail that I haven't heard, I don't think ever at this committee, but it's something that is of concern in community and at the police level and at the board table. So I think it's uh, incumbent on me to bring it to the committee's attention. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Points noted. Moving to the survey. So we have about a, what is it? A, I think it's about a six or uh, maybe eight page survey um, with a variety of maps. My understanding is that the map we just approved or version thereof will be substituted into page two and also uh, page, I believe it's page seven. So with those comments in mind, um, and again, they are inviting, they're still inviting, you know, word editing, all right? Um, so let's have some discussion on it and then we'll look for a motion. Phyllis. Um, I just wanted to say that, that I thought that the survey is good. The only thing 
and I, I was spoke, I've spoken to two or three people about this, like just casually as they've come to my house for coffee, we've been discussing this, that when they, when they see like area one option A, you know, area, area option B, area one, area two, option C, area one, area three, could we not just have the map and get word of the and get rid of area the legend one, area two area three and because the whole option a area a option b area one and three that's really confusing okay so if i could clarify just from my own understanding i think what you're saying it's the legend where it says boundary areas in the yes. lower left or right corners and yes. you're suggesting that perhaps we remove that and, unless and, unless it's uh, perhaps on the overview map. Yeah, and, and where it says on the top of each one of those, it says area one, area one, area two, area three. Uh, that That is a really mixed people up, you know? Where if you just have option A and that's the picture, they should be able to look at the picture and figure right, it out. Right, okay. Because we're, we're, we're throwing options and areas and really all we want is feedback on option A, B, C, D, or E. Yes, correct. Okay. So note to consultants, do we need the those titles that refer to um, uh, Get rid area of the area. one, yeah. area two, and area three on the on the top of the maps and also in the legend? You know, okay. the, the, the thing is the 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 maybe the where the name on the place where it says, like for instance, um, you know, Skaha Estates or Okanagan Falls, or whatever. If that's just a little bit bigger print, then it should be obvious when they look at it, without having the area one, etc. Okay. All right. Any other comments? Mylene. I I think it's fine as it is. That's just my two cents worth. Okay. Any other comments relative to the survey? I know I went through it as if I was filling it out from a couple of different perspectives. And I, I, uh, I was worried that when we put in option E, it would confuse people in terms of, you know, do I still feel I can comment on adjusting the boundary for, for option A, B, C, or D? And I think, I think they've maintained that. I, I think it's, it's clear um, from my perspective. So I felt okay about that. All right, I'll take any other comments. And if there are none, I'll take a motion to accept this as a survey in principle. Any other comments? I'm not seeing just, any. I'll just, just that I do feel really strongly about that, you know, because I've talked to seven people and they all have said, is it, it should be either one or the other, but not both, because it just screwed them up. Okay. I'll take a motion to uh, accept in principle the survey document made by Kay, seconded by Kurt. If I've got that right, to accept the survey document in principle. All right. Any, and, and comments noted about area one and two and the legend and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, all right, any further comments or questions? Okay, I'll call the question. All those in favor of the motion, raise your hand or say aye. 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 Thank you, Mylene. Uh, anyone opposed? Seeing and hearing none, I'll declare that one carried. Okay, document three. Um, and this is the backgrounder, uh, which was expanded to refer to um, option E. There are still some blanks here, um, which will be um, addressed in the next day or two. Uh, they have had the request in since Thursday night. I, I think it was Thursday night and they're waiting for the map specialist to uh, get back to them. Um, 
Yeah. Any comments before we get going? Phyllis. I have one on page two of six and it's regarding the bullet point about Vaso Lake. And it says uh, approximately the- Sorry, which bullet is that? Sorry. It's, uh, one, two, three, four, five. The six bullets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Starting with Vaso Lake. So uh, I believe it's the second full sentence and it says, the inclusion of this node provides for less efficient servicing of roads. And I just wanted to make a couple, a couple comments regarding that. So if you are looking at the bottom of Oliver River Ranch Road on the south end, from the end of Oliver Ranch Road unto Vassal Lake Crescent, it's less than one kilometer uh, to move from servicing that road to coming to Vassal Lake. And then in Vassal Lake, we only have one street. So I believe that that uh, sentence is incorrect and it's rather misleading. And yeah. I would like to see it be removed. Okay, a concern noted there. How does that sit with uh, Ron? Yeah, thank you. And it, it just caused me to reflect on numbers. Our budget per year is 2.75 million. Uh, we have a population of 4,016. Uh, Sycamus has 2,400 people. That $40 million over six years translates to 6.6 6 million per year that we didn't get. That is more than double our entire budget per year. So when we're getting into the, the weeds of a road maintenance issue or repair, a capital asset or, or maintenance replacement improvement, whether it's water, sewer, road, that's what that money is that we've been missing out on for 55 years. When you do the math, that's our money, by the way, we pay the taxes, it just hasn't been coming here. So it's real important to be mindful on these details. But when I hear Phyllis catch a little niggly like that, I thank you, because I think it's important. I think those little details matter. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other comments? Okay, sorry. I, just, I had a question for, for Ron. I know that there is grants available for infrastructure grants. I'm, I guess my question would be is how many municipalities put in for those same grants and how many municipalities get chosen? And if you're aware of what the basis that would be. So I, I am aware that there is the grant money and being a municipality would provide us with greater access, but how, you know, how often does a municipality get the funding, I guess? Yeah, yeah I, I can speak to that very specifically. And, and the answer is that it's up to the municipalities to apply. And it's Wayne Gretzky famously said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. You don't apply, you won't succeed. I've, I've mentioned Clearwater, 27 million in the last 15 years. That was stated to this committee on March 5th at the panel discussion by Mayor Blackwell. Uh, I spoke with the mayor of Sycamus on Thursday, September 28. 40 million. Now, I believe them. 40 million. But what these communities have in common is they're asking. They're taking the shot. And they're having success. In the last 56 years, we have not been able to take the shot. We're not allowed. We're not allowed to play. Uh, I spoke with uh, Laird McLaughlin this morning for an hour. Laird uh, works Ministry of Municipal Affairs Infrastructure. He does these grants. He works with the federal government. We spoke about this in some detail. What matters when you're a municipality is if you don't ask, okay, you're not going to get any. Now, if you ask, I, I'm, I'm showing you examples of real communities that are comparable to us, comparable communities, the success they're having. We haven't had that success. I'm going to put this to you upside down. We're overdue. It's our time. We deserve our fair share. I've spoken this way with ministers. I've spoken this way to Linda Larson in 2019, uh, specifically October 15, 2019, October. So the point is, it's work to apply the RDOS applies. The RDOS is different, and they don't, we don't qualify 
for the ones that you have to be in So we don't even qualify for those, we can't apply. But the RDOS does its job, but it applies for, for regional grants. It applies for nine electoral areas. Regional district, if you talk to them, which I have, uh, they are not OK Falls specific. They don't just apply for OK Falls. If they have a grant, they apply one time, perhaps for a choice of nine. When you're a municipality, you're not limited that way. You can apply every time, every time, every time if you're a minute. So Oliver can apply every time. RDOS staff have to choose between nine electoral areas every time. When you start to look at these inequities, the system of the regional district, it's a board of lessers and betters. We're not the same as municipalities. That's a fact. When you look at the differences, when we look at the differences, the differences are, they matter. And, and what is your success rate? If you're watching hockey playoff right now, look at the number of shots that, that Connor McDavid's taking. Look at the number of goals he's getting. He doesn't score on every shot, but he's taking the shots. If he didn't take any shots, he would never score. So when a municipality occurs, you need staff who are tuned in, paying attention. It, the better you are at asking, the better you're going to be at succeeding. And if you, I can guarantee you this, if you don't ask, you'll be 100% successful and not getting any. How successful will you be? I'll give you one final statistics. Clearwater, first 10 years, they applied for 20.2 million. They were successful on 17.4 million. It's an 85% batting average. I'm not saying we'd be that good, Kay. Maybe with some good staff, we could be that good. But notice others have done it. What happened to us in those 10 years? We had zero, zero versus 17.4 million. It's the math is not that complicated. 17.4 is more than zero. Zero is what we had. Zero is what we qualified for. They have since then, in the five years that followed, they went from 17 million, from 17 million to 27. 27, that's 10 million in, two, in, in, in five years. Do the math, that's 2 million a year. 2 million a year is more than 1.74 million. We look at their 15 year experience, Kay, 15 years of facts, not, not speculation, not what is, but factual history, factual history that we can confirm. They have averaged over $750 per man, woman, and child every year in 15 years. We've had zero. There's the scoreboard. When you look at our budget, 2.75 million, 2.75 million is what we're paying. Add, add, add another 1.74 million on the low side, 2 million on the high side per year. That's a lot of money we're missing out on. Would we be as successful? Probably not. Would we do better than zero? I guarantee it. I guarantee we can do better than zero. And that's been our, that's been our score for 56 years. Thank you, Ron. That was, that was helpful. <laughs> hey, you have another question? I was just going to move to accept the overview in principle. Okay, I'll accept that motion if there's a seconder. Kurt, so the motion is made by Kay, seconded by Kurt. Now, do we have any further comments or discussions? Just that that change be made. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any further comment? Okay, I'll call the question. All those in favor of the motion, raise your hand or say aye. Aye. Okay, anyone opposed? Seeing and hearing none, that motion is carried. Okay, now that takes us through um, the work and the purpose that we had carved out for ourselves today. My understanding is the consultants and RDOS staff are working to get this uh, survey and background document um, formatted and paginated um, to be as readable uh, and take as least amount of paper as possible, um, but still be as readable as possible and uh, get that out in the mail. Uh, I don't know whether that's going to be Friday, Saturday, or Monday. Um, the survey will go live again Friday or Monday, um, and it will be open till uh, the 10th 
recognizing that that's a Friday and there'll probably be some leeway for uh, continued acceptance beyond that till the Monday. We then have our next meeting on the 15th at which, uh, and I hope everybody's received an invite. Raise your hands, everybody. Yeah, okay. Check your email if you haven't seen it and hit accept. Uh, at that point, we're gonna see some initial uh, data. And as I said, in, in my way of thinking, it, it, it starts, I don't think we wanna formulate our opinions based on that, but we want to start figuring out in our own personal minds, what is it that we are going to be uh, making our decision on? Uh, what, what, what are the decision criteria that we would, we would have? The uh, final data would then be presented on the 21st, which is a Tuesday, not a Wednesday. Um, again, that meeting invite has also been sent out. So at that point, we would be uh, making a recommendation and I don't have the exact terminology in it, but we would be making a recommendation whether or not to proceed with uh, an, in, or you know, to request uh, an incorporation study, um, and defining the option A, B, C, D, or E that we wanted that incorporation study to be based upon. That recommendation is what we do. The report is prepared by the consultants, and they will reference our recommendations within that report. And then their report goes to the RDOS board. I haven't got the dates on that in my head, um, but I believe both prior to the end of the month in draft. And then we have some time in which to uh, finalize that report prior to uh, the end of July. Okay, so that's my understanding of the next steps and timelines ahead of us and Kay. Uh, you can back me up or clarify wherever I've goofed. Um, my understanding is that the boundary that we're going to be recommending will be a result of all of the information that's compiled and not necessarily a clear A or a clear B or a clear C or a clear mm -hmm. D or a clear E. Um, but once all the information is compiled um, and we review that, that we will be recommending a single boundary as a result of that. Is that okay? Yep, fair good. Okay. Um, the other thing I don't wanna lose track of is where we're at with the presentation on the 11th and if we've gotten any more information with respect to technology, there seemed to be some confusion or um, lack of clarity. I won't say confusion, lack of clarity about whether or not there was a technology in order to actually have a PowerPoint presentation versus a, a paper presentation. Right. So I'll, I'll defer to Ron on that. I think he's had some uh, direct email. I've not had email. I've only had a vo one voice conversation. I think Ron's had several voice and, and email. So Ron? Yes, and thank you. Uh, further to that last question, and I have another comment after. Um, I, I met with Danny Francisco, who was our IT manager on Thursday at the board meeting, uh, and I had communications during the board meeting with uh, Tony Abbott, who is the uh, president of the Golden Hills Strata. Now, Tony has told me uh, through, e through uh, email or text communication, I forget which, that they have the club room uh, booked for the 11th, but he, they would prefer the gymnasium. Uh, because of COVID uh, concerns. And they have 16 members in the strata. You think about a couple could show up from each uh, home, possibly. You're, you're running into the 30s pretty quickly. And uh, they don't know how many will attend, uh, but he has expressed preference for the gymnasium. The smart board K is portable. It has the capacity for your PowerPoint. It's the same, the same, um, uh, this is the exact same that you saw uh, on Tuesday a week ago. It's the, and we got that for this purpose. So we could have these kind of meetings in community. 
when I when I asked for it, I was hopeful that one day we'd be having these meetings when it came to governance. And I wanted to give our community members the benefit of being able to, this is before COVID. I didn't know COVID was coming. It just turned out COVID happened and it gives us another reason. But the short answer is, is yes, that's all uh, going to be possible. And uh, I've got a call into Nancy Wright. She's the person who would answer the question. I don't have an answer. I will follow up. Sydney is uh, on holiday. Uh, anyways, I've communicated with three, four, five staff on this. I don't get good, fast, prompt answers. That's just the way our organization is. Sometimes it's uh, frustrating and disappointing, which is unfortunate, but especially when you have time pressure. So I will persist. Uh, if the chair wants to help me, I would appreciate the help from the chair and the staff want to help. I would appreciate help from staff. Uh, absent that assistance, I will do it on my own and, and I will carry on. Uh, I had a different question and the different questions were sent. Ron, there. Yep. Ron, can I just cut in just to, to close on, on yep. the June 11th meeting? Yep. Um, I believe I'm in town and I'd, I'd love to show up. Uh, I mean, if I can help, I, I know I know how to set up the smart board and move it and get it. I can turn on the smart board. Um, so uh, I, I could contribute that. Be careful not to hit the mic on the remote or you, you disconnect all the other mics, which is bad. So does that, do, is that good works for you, Kay? Okay, then I've got Phyllis and then we're back to Ron. So I'm sorry, I missed the last meeting. But so that June 11th meeting is something that is just specific to one yeah. group yeah. In, within it, uh, Okanagan. Okay, because I'm kind of out of the loop on that one. Sorry. We, we were then, asked to make, the committee was asked to make a, a presentation or indirectly. I don't know that we've received anything formally okay. in writing, but we are going to make that presentation. Okay, Kay's wonderful. Excellent. Uh, and my other question was just, uh, are our upcoming meetings in person? Are they going to be face-to-face -face meetings? If possible, yeah. Okay, let's let's flag that. Yeah. Action item to determine whether we can uh, have those meetings in person. And uh, that that would be great. Yeah. Okay. Or hybrid or hybrid? Or uh, well, it'll have to be hybrid. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to have any meeting, I don't think, from now till eternity, mm -hmm. without it being hybrid. Mm -hmm. Okay, that do you, Kay? Uh, Phyllis? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And Thank Kay, you. I think we've addressed your question. Okay, so now we're back to Ron. And Ron, if you would like to, you know, we always give you a spot at the end of the agenda to uh, make comments. So uh, I think you've got the mic now. Well, thank you very much. And, and I've been a fan of the hybrid concept before COVID. Uh, and and I, I think it's wonderful that we have the technology. Uh, indeed, that's why we have the technology and we chose carefully to make sure we had good quality for a reason. And this is for our Parks and Rec Commission, for Advisory Planning Commission, for community associations and others alike. This is an amenity that belongs to the people in this community. And uh, we'll, we'll start to, we're, we're already receiving dividends from that uh, investment into that uh, asset. And, I, and I'm very uh, pleased that we have it. Um, my, my question uh, was, I'd heard, and I, I haven't double checked myself, but I heard from, from others that some of our meeting recordings may be missing or deficient or not, or not up to date. So my question is for the chair, do we have, uh, are those recordings up to speed? I refer people to them all the time. I, I, I ask them to, uh, to go and, and, and spend the time and watch and listen and learn. And uh, so my question is, are, are those uh, records, are those recordings in order? Are they deficient? Are there recordings missing? If so, why so? I haven't checked to see if we have a meeting recording for every meeting. I know Kurt has listened to several of the previous meetings. Um, and I have listened to uh, one or two of the previous meetings, but I have not checked the length of each recording to see if, you know, if it's a complete recording. And I haven't checked every meeting to see if there is a recording for every meeting. So if you would like to record that as an action item, we can do that. Yeah, I would, I would really appreciate knowing because I am going to be continuing to refer people to, uh, you know, open and transparent process to participate, to join, 
to yeah. come, to, to speak, but also to review, review the record. And, and that record is important. And if the record is not in good order, I'd appreciate knowing why it's not, well, if it's in order. And secondly, if not, why not? It's one of those things that it's a detail that matters to me. And I have lots of experience in a different career where, where sometimes, uh, well, it's just funny how things go missing. So no, I, no, I, I valid. Um, as I said, I know I've looked and listened uh, to some um, and they were there and Kurt has as well, but I don't know that any of us have done an inventory mm -hmm. to ensure that we've got them or not. As, as an example, this meeting is being recorded and it's being recorded to the cloud. That link yeah. will be sent out to staff and it'll be posted. Yeah, excellent. I Carry on then, Ron. My final remarks, you know, I, I care that it's fair. Always. That's my bias. It's important to me that process is good, that information is good, that communication is good, that participation is good. The better quality the information in, the better quality decisions that are put out. Uh, my experience in life is people who feel they've had good process uh, are more comfortable with the decisions that result. I'm talking court process, litigation process, uh, all kinds of legal process, and that includes this process. Uh, I've spoken in, in support of good process. I've raised concerns where I've had them. Uh, and I, I want to say the last few meetings, there is a coincidence. And, and, and the coincidence is uh, I, I'm seeing better participation, better meetings. And I thank the chair and, and all concerned, especially the committee members. Uh, and um, uh, this continues to be a driving concern for me right through to, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing where this, uh, where this process ends, but it's real important to me that people uh, get a fair process. And, uh, and, and uh, that's what I'll keep speaking to. Thank you. Okay, thank you to the director. Uh, Kurt, closing question. Yes, um, I, I brought up the last meeting that uh, uh, the possibility of a social at my place. And I apologize, I went down to Whistler with my daughter this weekend and just got caught up in mountain biking and got her, so never sent out the invitation. Um, seeing as we have everybody here, is there a date specific that would work? I'm looking at a Thursday of this week or po possibly a Tuesday of next week. Um, I'd, I'd throw it out there, seeing as everybody's in, uh, just about everybody's here, maybe we could just uh, shortcut the two day email chain and just get it over with in five minutes. Any comments? Personally, I'm not here Thursday. Uh, I will probably be here Tuesday, um, and I don't know what time of day you're you're talking. And, and again, thank you. I think it's a great idea. Um, I'm looking to the evening, and uh, whether the evening starts at six o'clock or seven o'clock, um, and open ended. Whenever we're done, we're done. I guess when the box of donuts is empty, everybody will decide to go home. So. Um, any other uh, questions? So if uh, Tuesday of next week works, that works perfectly for me. Um, anybody else have any comments? Tuesday works for me. Tuesday works for me. Tuesday works for me. This is Kay. Tuesday works for me. Wonderful. Um, I wonder if I could um, impose on the chair to uh, extend an invitation to staff and to consultants for next Tuesday evening social event at my place. Okay. I could do that. Um, again, uh, evening is five o'clock, uh, <laughs> seven o'clock, <laughs> nine o'clock. Seven. You know, uh, bearing in mind too that some of us are be, you know, it's not a great long time. I mean, you could be further time if you were going from southeast Calgary and northwest. But um, okay, um, some of us work, so let's just say seven o'clock uh, seems to be a good number. And then we can be done by 8.30 or 9 or something like that. Or if it goes longer, I have no problem with it. But uh, does 7 o'clock work for everyone? Sure. Okay. Works yeah. for me. Wonderful. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. All right. Um, if there's no further comments or questions, uh, again, with thanks to Kurt. Uh, okay. Uh, Ron. Yeah, an odd, odd question. I have not seen Karen, I don't think, at a meeting almost forever. 
Is there any update? Anybody reach out to her? Anybody know why she's not participating? Karen or Carrie McLean? Help me with the, that's how bad it is. I forgot her name, Carrie. Carrie McLean? Yeah, I haven't seen her in a long time. Anybody know why? Uh, I did recently reach out to her and I thought I'd mentioned that at a previous meeting, but it may not have been a meeting of this group. It may have been a meeting of the, with the staff and consultants. Um, she has decided she is stepping off the committee and has cited personal reasons and just the fact that she'd missed so many and did not feel that she could um, catch up. Um, I asked her if she would feel free to rethink that, uh, talk to Kay or myself, um, and if she would formalize it, if she was gonna step off with a letter to uh, Christy or myself, um, she hasn't responded to that. And I think without a doubt, she has stepped off. Okay, I didn't know. And we're missing somebody tonight. Uh, obviously, Jim DeAndre is missing. We're, we're missing Eleanor, Thank who's you. indicated she'd had a previous engagement. And, and is there someone else missing? Nope. And where we have eight all in not counting Jim and myself. So eight. Bob and Carrie are off. Yeah. But that then the math, am, am I missing numbers here? I'm counting one, two, three, four, five. I'm counting six. We just here. lost David. We had well, David, David on. was on. I, that's where my, my, my count is wrong. Thank you very much. I just, I like to keep, I, 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 I take notes. I have a compulsion uh, for uh, record keeping. And uh, yeah, I was just uh, having trouble figuring out who was missing, but it was Eleanor and yeah, David was there. Thank you. Got it, thanks. Okay. If that's the situation, I think I would now take a motion to adjourn. Made Excuse by me, Phyllis. Can I say one thing? Sorry, go ahead, Mylene. Sorry, I just wanted to say thank you to um, the committee for stepping up and offering to help with poster distribution and I'll be in touch with details um, by morning. Okay. Well, thank, and thank to you, Marlene. Yeah. Marlene. Thanks a ton for putting together a communications plan that allows the consultants and the committee and the staff to all sort of see what it is we're doing. Okay, so yeah. thank yeah. you very much. And Great my, job. You're welcome. You're welcome and thank you. Um, Mylene, I noticed that the regional district had posted your first, uh, you know, coming soon survey uh, Facebook page today. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And then I'll, um, I'll be taking care of the Facebook and forwarding that chat later this afternoon and tomorrow. Okay. Kurt? Um, Mylene, I apologize. I was busy this weekend and didn't have the opportunity to get back to you, but just so we can uh, bring this point to, or right, or right here, right now, um, I'd be happy to help distribute um, in the Upper Carmi neighborhood. Uh, that'd be great, Kurt. Um, I will uh, message you on the side and bring posters to you tomorrow. Okay, do, yeah. we have a, do we have a digital copy that I can put on our Upper Carmi Neighborhood Association page? Yeah, I will send that to you as well. Great, thank you so much. Yeah, and I had no replied, uh, sorry, Phyllis, I had replied the same thing just this morning, Mylene, so let me know how I can help. Absolutely, I'll have your route maps and your paper route ready for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. It's my first job, okay. All right, folks, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Made by Phyllis, seconded by Kay, okay. Thank you very much. We are adjourned. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye.